This is a Wago 221Y connector, and it is bloody awesome. But for all of its innovation, why does it continue to fail current tests against its predecessors? So in this video, I'm gonna break down the differences between the Wago, Wago, whatever, and some of the more traditional connectors. And to prove my point, I'm cranking this baby way up, and some of the results are actually pretty surprising. Right out your legend, I know there's already been some awesome videos on this topic, so this is not gonna be an in-depth comparison. Instead, I'm focusing primarily on why the construction of the Wago connector will always produce more heat. Plus, I really just wanted to make a video where I could put the Australian connector on the map. Sue me. What you're looking at is a bus bar. They are flat copper bars, primarily used for common rails in large switchboards. And this is also a bus bar. That's right, the Wago connector is just a mini bus bar. But if it's good for industry, then it must be good for domestic use, right? Well, industrial bus bars are inherently lossy and often over-engineered to compensate. Plus, their connections are heavily scrutinized to ensure that there's minimal chance of failure. So for this reason, you would think that the Wago connector would be well over-engineered. And you'd be right. I mean, the Germans clearly know their stuff, but it doesn't matter how much engineering you put into it, it just can't compete with a direct connection. Okay, so now you know why the Wago connector produces more heat, let's put it to the test. All wired up in the orange corner is the Wago connector, who clearly has some new tricks up his sleeve. And in the yellow corner, we have the OG wire connector, the wire knot which I have particular affinity for and I think it is incredibly underrated. Anyway. And in the blue corner, we had the conductor from down under, the blue point! I know it's transparent, but the originals were called blue points, so yeah. This little known connector has a brass housing and is secured by a screw. Oh, and I'm getting the word that Dangerous Dave is down at the ring, so let's cross now. Thanks very much, Dave. Crap helmet, by the way. <laughs> I am super excited for this one because we're going to be pumping 80 amps of DC current through these three connectors. Now, to see which one comes out on top, we're going to be measuring two things. We've got the Fluke VT08, which is going to be measuring the thermal properties of each of these connectors. Then we've got the Fluke 375, which is going to be measuring the constant current throughout the circuit. Now, the wire we're using today is 2.5 millimeters squared, and we'll usually max out at around 25 amps. So I'm expecting to see some sparks fly. So without further ado, let's get ready to conduct. Doesn't really roll off the tongue the same. Anyway, let's go. Three, two, one, go. All right. Ooh, we're actually, we're actually sitting at 62 amps. All right, let's see what the thermal camera is saying. All right, we're already up on the wire nut. So about 28, almost 30, 30 degrees, 32, it is peaking. Ooh, the Wago is up to 60, 48, 50. Let's go over to the blue point. The blue point really doesn't have any, any issues on the connector. We are on the wire, we're up to 50, 50 degrees. This is 50 degrees C. Wow, that, um, that Wago connector is getting really hot, super hot. And the wire nut, the wire nut's doing really well on the connector too, it's just that cable, you can see that. That direct connection is really working well. Now, obviously we're not gonna be getting ridiculous amount of current like this through it. Okay, we've been in about 200 degrees on the Wago connector for a few minutes now. And uh, we can see there's some smoking going on. I don't know if you can see that on camera. We also got some smoking over here from the wire nut. Now this is, this is pretty surprising to me because we got pretty much the same temperature at the wire nut as we do with the Wago connector. And we are getting some smoking off that too, although it doesn't seem to be destroying the integrity as much as what the actual Wago connector is. It must be made out of a different plastic. But if we go over to the blue point, the Aussies. Now the Aussies are actually a fair bit cooler. It's 160. 160 degrees, so that's 40 degrees difference. I mean, obviously we're not gonna get to these temperatures. Your protection would have gone off in your house way sooner than what we've left this on for. At this stage, if, you, if you're running cables this hot, the actual blue point is killing it. 
So there you have it, slightly underwhelming. I did actually have to create my own sparks for some excitement, but let's go back to Dave the Jerk for the results. What the hell? No, you're a jerk, you jerk. So after one hour, we finally saw all of the cables melt away and I have no idea how much that's gonna cost on my electricity bill. In the end, we saw maximum failure from the Wago connector, which was no surprise. But what was surprising was the wire nut was not far behind. And then way out in front was the blue point that absolutely knocked out the competition. Now look, there may have been some controversy around the direction of the flow, but my opinion is whilst the blue point still came out on top, the Wago connector will always take the crown. I mean, the wire started to melt before the connectors anyway, and even that is pretty impressive. But hey, you know what's more impressive? How the UK managed to convince everybody that their plugged up was the best in the world. <laughs> yeah, right.